What's up, Night Owl? Still here back with another video, and today we're going over the Rhyme of the Frostbade Chapter 2 location, Ongajuk's Bell. Ongajuk's Bell is located about 14 miles north of Bremen. This location gets its name from the legendary awakened sperm whale, Ongajuk, who has a ship strapped to its back with this protective safety bubble that party that creatures can actually board the, the boat on the back of the sperm whale and ride around underwater with this safety bubble and they can actually like go on undersea adventures and things like that. Angajuk was awakened by a druid by the name of Anga and not much is known about this druid. You can feel free uh, as a DM to fill in these details however you see fit. Leave a comment for what you did with Anga or the direction that you took or if you just left it vague. The party can hear about this location through the typical rumors around 10 towns. They can also be hired on as a bodyguard to a whale oil merchant by the name of Helka. Helka would like the party to escort her to Angajuk's bell and then ring the bell and have Angajuk escort them in, in the whale's submarine to a location where there are whalers so that she can pick up whale oil. Obviously, they have to hide this fact from the whale that's delivering them to the location, so the lie that they use is that it's fish oil in the barrel. When the party decides to visit Angajuk's Bell, the first place that they're going to reach is Area 1, the Frozen Pier. Here they will find a pier completely glazed over with slippery ice, and there's also a rowboat stuck in the ice against the pier. The party doesn't actually need this boat since they can simply walk across the thick ice to reach the bell. Area 2 is the Stone Cabin. This is where the druid Anga lived, which made it convenient for her to visit Angajuk but the cabin has been vacant for decades. Inside this cabin is a bed and a small hearth. The hearth holds enough wood to fuel a nightly fire for three days. Area three is the bell itself. This copper bell dangles from a 10 foot pole attached to a short wooden pier. Ringing the bell will cause three giant vultures to swoop in and attack unless the characters have meat to offer them. Angajuk takes about 30 minutes to arrive after the bell is rung, and it will be accompanied by harmless narwhals and dolphins. Once the whale arrives, the party is going to need to befriend it in order to have it take them where they want to go within the Sea of Moving Ice. More on that in a second. This whale knows the location of the Frost Maiden's Island and is willing to take the party there. Area 4 is the hole in the ice where Angajuk will surface, and the whale will settle itself at a height that enables people to climb into the boat attached to its back. Now, as I mentioned, the party's going to need to earn the whale's trust, and there's a couple of ways to go about doing that. The party can offer the whale an octopus in exchange for transportation, and if they don't happen to have one on hand, they can fish one off of the pier using the typical fishing rule. The party can also offer food to some of Angajuk's friends like the narwhals or the dolphins. If the characters lure one of these creatures to the surface with an offering of food, they can make a DC 10 animal handling check, which will please Angajuk. If neither of those work, you can also run an event where a group of hunters show up. These hunters intend to kill Angajuk so that they can harvest the whale for parts. This encounter is 100% optional and it involves having a group of hunters show up from the major city of Waterdeep in order to harvest this precious substance known as ambergris from sperm whales' stomachs. This ambergris is used in making perfumes and it's also used by some wizards for some arcane rituals. These five whale hunters use the Thug stat block. This stat block doesn't have anything really noteworthy. 11 AC, 32 hit points. These things are gonna go down pretty fast. They get two melee swings with their mace, which do a D6 with a plus four to hit. Nothing really great there. They have pack tactics so they can get advantage if they focus. But overall, these these guys are going to be pretty weak. Even at, even if, with five of them attacking the party, they're going to go down pretty fast. And they came here from one of the taverns in Bremen when they heard about Angaju. They brought with them several casks of oil and they plan on pouring the oil into the water in order to poison the wildlife in the area so that they can harvest sperm whale. The leader of these hunters is named Gendron, and he's willing to offer the party a share of the cut if they decide to help him. Otherwise, the party can run him off with a successful intimidation check, DC 17. If the characters don't intervene, the hunters are going to pour the oil into the water, and over the course of several days, the water will be poisoned and dead fish will start to rise. 
Onga Juke, being that it has it is awakened and it has an intelligence score, does avoid this area. After four days, the hunters conclude that their plan didn't work and they'll get desperate and decide to use a party member as bait. And it's at this point that the adventuring party will probably offer a swift execution to all five of these hunters. But in the event that the hunters manage to tie up one of the party members and actually use them as bait, Onga Juke will show up and save that party member. Onga Juke arrives just long enough to spit a party member back up onto the surface and then submerge leaving the hunters with nothing. This location is rather short and uneventful. What I would do as a DM is try to provide some locations for Angajuk to actually take the party. Maybe pull some location, some of the points of interest from chapter two and move them out into the sea of moving ice. So Angajuk actually has to deliver the party there. Otherwise, you can just skip over this point of interest entirely until the party needs to actually go face the Frost Maiden at her, at her island. At which point they will have to meet Angajuk anyway and then you could run this encounter that way this 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 particular location is pretty much designed to be a part a segue to ariel's island and it doesn't really leave much else again you can put location some of the key locations in chapter two out in the sea of moving ice for just to give angajuk something to take the somewhere to take the party other than the frost maiden because if the party if you're not really ready for the party to take on the frost maiden at her island then it, this is kind of just a uh, is a is a filler episode sort of so to speak as far as filling in some backstory and some details of this place to kind of flavor it up a bit i would have anga the the druid that awakened anga juke have her her journal in the hut and flesh out her backstory give her some kind of detailed backstory something interesting maybe from a previous campaign if you had a party member that played a druid you can bring them back maybe weave in a character's backstory if you like just kind of flavor Anga and then fill in those details in her journal and have that journal here at the at the location. If you'd like to use the backstory that I came up with for Anga, I made her an ex-pirate and she was known as the Salt Witch around the Swords Coast. And she ran around in her pirate ship and her awakened sea creatures and kind of terrorized all throughout the Sword Coast doing piratey things. Kind of like Ravison and Mare de Walden, just awakening creatures and just causing havoc throughout uh, the sword coast and eventually she retired and maybe she took up uh, took up the good life or, or, or decided to retire and maybe come here with her awakened sperm whale onga juke and they just kind of lived out their life together before she grew old and died and you're free to use that backstory or light you can elaborate on it you can tell me it's horrible in the comments if you like whatever uh whatever floats your boat and that's it for Angajuk's Bell. There's really not much for this location, which is why I suggested that you that you save this spot for when the party is ready to take on Ariel's or the Frost Maiden's Island, because this isn't really a set isn't really worth its own session or its own or its own adventure rather. But I'm not sure. You can you can really flavor this up a bit. Give Anga a backstory, fill in that journal, and let the party know about it. You're free to use mine, the the, the whole Salt Witch thing, if you like. You can also add some of the other chapter two locations out into the sea of, of moving ice. For example, you can put the Lost Spire of Netheril out there and Angajuk. While Angajuk is underwater, kind of doing that deep sea exploration with the party, they can stumble across this Lost Spire of Netheril and they can do that. Or one of the other locations, you can, you can come up with stuff. Maybe the Knolls and the Cackling, Cackling Chasm are out there on some island, or they can go visit the Whalers and deal with them. There's a couple of different directions you're gonna, that you can take, but you're going to need to elaborate on this one because, as it's written, there's really, there's really, uh, there's really not much to this place. So, um, the the key things are have have somewhere for them to go when they board Anga Juke's ship and give Anga a backstory. That's really where this is going to to fill in this particular location. Also, you can give them a few combats. A nice troll can come by, or any of the other random encounters or, or wilderness encounters in the book they can come by here they can deal with them here and they can protect Angajuk from the hunters there's a couple of different directions this this location in particular is probably going to take the most work to fill out but with that being said i hope you enjoyed the video if you did you know how youtube works hit those buttons leave a comment down below let me know what your favorite of the chapter two locations are and if you're interested in joining this DD community Make sure you join the Discord, link in the description. Come by, ask questions, let me know what you think. 
And as always, I'll see you at sundown.